This is Rob Carbone, and you're listening to BD4, where there's no better way to get your Yankees and Knicks analysis. is going on guys this is rob carbone coming at you with another episode of bd4 where there is no better way to get your yankees and knicks analysis than by tuning in to this podcast right here right now before we begin guys i just want to make sure if you haven't done so already be sure to follow me on facebook and on twitter that is at ny sports talk rc and if you haven't followed me on instagram be sure to do that as well at Rob J Carbone and also if you haven't subscribed to BD4 um be sure to do that also which is at Apple Podcasts it's on Google Podcasts um you can find it on Spotify SoundCloud Radio Public um the video cast is up on YouTube um and then there are plenty more platforms as well where you can subscribe to and listen to and download BD4 um, you can find all those platforms on um, on my blog. My website is nysportstalkrc.wordpress.com. Find that page, um, and then you can find me on all of my platforms, and you can find my social media. So just wanted to get that out of the way for you guys. But yeah, I mean, we're going we're gonna to do episode 78 tonight. Um, the Knicks continue to sink, right? <clears throat> um, they suck so much, man. It, it's, and, um, you know, I, before we even begin, I, I just want to apologize because honestly, it's every episode, every show that we do on the New York Knicks is pretty much the same, right? We talk about the same shit every time and it's so hard. It must be so hard as a listener or you know, to all zero of you who do listen in, um, but it must be so difficult just listening to the same exact garbage and junk every time. And I apologize, but it's really the Knicks that's doing this to us, man. It's the same subject, the same topic every single time because they don't, you know, they don't know what they're doing out there. They continue to, to um, prioritize veteran minutes to prioritize short-term players over the guys like, um, you know, over our young foundation. And tonight, the other night, it was the same story. Um, you know, when they played the Pacers a couple nights ago, they lost 106-98. to 98. They played them well, sure, but they ended up losing. Um, they were down 22 at one point, cut the deficit to 6 with about 6.15 remaining in the fourth quarter. R.J. Barrett drove to the rim and, and uh, put in two points um, to cut that deficit to 6. Also, a big fourth quarter from Frank Nielakina that game. If I can remember, it was Bobby Portis hitting a few three-point shots as well in the fourth. Um, Frank actually got 30 minutes, so that was good to see him display some, you know, some good performance in, in, in big minutes. But, you know, it came down to the Knicks not being able to stop guys like Sabonis. Um, this guy's footwork is incredible, and he gave Mitchell Robinson a hard time. Five more fouls for Mitch on... Um, on Saturday night, so, or was that Friday night? I don't know, but it was just a mess. And the Knicks ended up losing because they, of course, are the Knicks. And tonight, you know, it was kind of the same story, actually, the other night and tonight, where R.J. Barrett, he gets involved early. The Knicks give him the ball early and let him do what he's what he's best at, which is, you know, shot creating and slashing to the rim with the ball in his hands. And then, as the game goes along, they, they kind of shy away from him, which makes no sense to me. You know, this is a guy who, this is, you know, we're, he's, he's starting to develop an identity for himself, which is, you know, we know that he plays solid defense. We know that he's a decent rebounder. and we, But, you know, offensively, the way he scores, we're starting to see 
he that he's a very good uh, attacker, right? He can attack the rim. He's a very good slasher, and he's a good shot creator. He's good with the ball in his hands to allow himself to create space, not just for him to get to the rim, but for others to be open as well. And the Knicks, you know, it seemed like, okay, for the first quarter of each of these games against the Pacers and tonight against the Rockets, it's they gave him the ball. They let him work. It was a little bit of point RJ. But, you know, the second, third quarters came along. Too much rest, too much not giving him the ball and giving it to fucking Bobby Portis, giving it to Julius Randle. It just made no sense to me. Um, Running a two-man game with Harkless and Portis, it just it, it, it didn't make sense, man. Tonight was another example of that. RJ goes out there in the first quarter, scores 14 points, rebounds five, assists three, 14, five, and three in the first quarter. And then the Knicks, you know, sit him for basically the entire second quarter outside of a couple of minutes. And then he comes back out, back out there in the second half and they exclude him from the offense. It goes to Portis. It goes to the freaking Randall. And none of them played well. And none of them usually play well, especially Portis. At least Randall's just inconsistent. Portis just... Bobby Portis just sucks all around. He's never giving this team a chance when he's on the court. And not only does he kill your team's chance of winning, but he destroys the Knicks' chances of developing their youth when he's out there because, you know, offensively he's either just chucking up a terrible three-point, you know, low-percentage shot, or he's clogging the lane and, and just posting up and um, doing that stupid little jump hook and causing just a stagnant offense by not passing the basketball. And then defensively, <clears throat> excuse me, defensively with Bobby Portis, it's terrible footwork. He cannot protect the rim, um, doesn't defend the arc. He's terrible on switches. He has no awareness out there. His help defense is about as good as mine. And I, fuck, I can't play defense. Um, it's just so bad to watch this guy go out there and the Knicks reward him for playing 25 minutes of terrible basketball every night. He's getting more, it's, he's getting these big minutes every single night for playing bad. And then we're going to punish guys like Knox. We're going to punish guys like Nilakina. Nilakina was hurt tonight, but you know, on the norm and we're punishing our youth for playing bad, but we're, we're, we're going to continue to throw our veterans out there every single day and just play them 30 plus minutes, 25 plus minutes, things like that. Why is that a thing? Why is that a thing when the trade deadline is far over with? Why is that a thing when the Knicks are not making the playoffs? Why is that a thing when these guys won't be here next season? Why is that a thing when you're one of the youngest teams in the league who is not going to do anything this season and have nothing else, um, no other goal but to prioritize your youth and try to develop them? Why are we doing these things when... We're supposed to be letting guys like Damian Dotson grow. We're supposed to be letting guys like Alonzo Trier grow and take that next step. We're supposed to be starting our our franchise cornerstone center in Mitchell Robinson. We're supposed to be treating R.J. Barrett like the number one option he should be on this team. We're supposed to be doing all of these types of things, you know, and uh, we're not doing it. We're still... Out here, I guess Mike Miller's maybe trying to coach for his job. I guess the front office still has this delusional playoff mandate in mind. I don't know, but, you know, it doesn't make sense to me. So give R.J. Barrett more ball time. Let him shot create. Don't just do it in the first quarter and then shy away from him. I know he got 19 shots the other night, and I know he got 17 more tonight, but he could be more efficient when he's taking these shots, if he was involved consistently throughout and not just the first quarter where he's taking these shots or not just, you know, it's, it's so annoying to have to watch um, the Knicks continue to do the wrong things out here. You know, we got to give this minutes distribution thing. 25 games remaining, guys. What are we doing here? We're, we're, we're you know, 75% done with the season. And it's, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it's, it's what are we doing? I don't, I don't know. It's time to call guys like Iggy up. Um, and you know what? If we're going to talk about how bad Kevin Knox is, send him down. Send him to the G League. It doesn't hurt to work on his game. At this point, he deserves to be playing every day, right? He needs to be playing. Not deserves, but he needs to be playing. Somebody like Kevin Knox needs to be on the court consistently. He shouldn't be having these games where he's you know, iced in the second half or these games where he's only getting 10 minutes, where he's only getting one to two shot attempts, sometimes three or four. He needs to be getting 30 plus minutes down in the uh, in the developmental league and playing for Westchester having a chance to actually 
put up some numbers and get his confidence up, you know, because if he goes down there and he produces, it's good for his confidence. And then we can see what he needs to work on, what he doesn't need to work on. And, and maybe one day in the future, he comes back up ready and he looks much more polished, you know, much less raw. Um, and everything kind of comes, comes to him where he's not forcing the action anymore. So I think somebody like Kevin Knox should go down and somebody like Iggy should come up and take somebody like Portis's minutes because that makes so much sense. See what you have in Iggy. Is he an NBA player? What kind of NBA player will he become? Will he become a Joe Inglis type, you know? Give him some minutes. Um, Kenny Wooten, it's time to call this guy up. Uh, maybe even Lamar Peters, but it's time, you know, you get the point. It's time that we prioritize our youth and stop, you know, having this delusional playoff mandate. It's about time we do the right thing because this rebuild process is not going to go anywhere but down if we continue to do what we've been doing um, the entire season here. We're going to take a quick commercial break and we'll be back, guys. All right. Hey guys, Rob Carbone here. Really quick, I just want to talk to you about Anchor. Anchor is a free podcast hosting site. And I say that again, it's a free podcast hosting site that will distribute your podcast for you to other platforms such as Spotify, Apple, Overcast, and all those websites. But here's the best part. Not only is it free, not only do they share it for you, but they will pay you for recording a podcast. They will pay you. And you can do it from your computer, from your phone. All you have to do is go to the Anchor app and download that or go to their website, which is anchor.fm to begin. It's everything you need. It is so convenient for podcasters like myself. So please guys, go download the Anchor app or go to their website, anchor.fm to begin. See you there. And, you know, what frustrates me even more sometimes is these lineups. Um, not only aren't we, not only are we um, excluding our youth here, but even when we do put our young guys out there, it's never with the right pairings, right? Why are we seeing Portis with um, Harkless out there wasting two spots on them? But why is R.J. Barrett with Bobby Portis? Why is R.J. Barrett with Julius Randle so often? Why isn't he paired with Frankie Lakina as much as he should be? Why isn't Mitchell Robinson out there with Frankie Lakina as much as he should be? Why aren't Dotson, Frank, R.J., Mitch, and even Knox playing together on the floor? Why are we, you know, these... There are so many lineups that are so questionable out there that we put out there. And it's like, you know, it's, it's, so it's not, it, we're not putting our players in position to succeed. And I talked about this in the last Knicks show heading into the break or heading out of the break that we're not putting our players in their best position to succeed here. We're putting them in position to fail practically. And, you know, so, so it's like sometimes we're still putting, um, Frankie Lakina, we're going to criticize him if we give him 20 minutes and he's not going to score more than two points. I get it, but let's give somebody like Frank, let's give somebody like Dotson Trier 30 minutes on a consistent basis, right? Let's see them play 30 minutes for the next 10 games or something and see how they look after that. Because really, you look back at their game logs, that's, that's not happening. We've never given our young guys big minutes game after game after game after game after game after game after game that's never happening you know so the sporadic play is sometimes due to sporadic minutes and sporadic playing time it's got to be somewhere it's got there's got to be a consistency here guys there's got to be a consistency where we're actually going to just throw them out there let them play it out but it's a shame because you know from Mike Miller's comments the other day he said and I'm paraphrasing here but he said he pretty much said out loud that he's not going to play this youth the way we want them to be out there. He's going to continue to stick with the veterans out there for the rest of the season. And it's it sucks. It's a shame to hear that because 
again, whatever it is, whether that's the front office trying to reach their playoff goal or whether it's it's ridiculous to even say out loud, but or whether it's Mike Miller coach for his job, it doesn't make sense to me. Speaking of though, um, there was a report yesterday, I believe it was Jonathan Macri of Sports Illustrated, um, where it said Tom Thibodeau is ninety percent likely to be the Knicks head coach. So that's that. <laughs> That's that. If it does become that the Knicks do hire um, Tibbs, um, I'm not sure. You know, I don't know much about the guy. I do know that he was praised for his hard-nosed defense over in Chicago. But I also do know that the last three years of his coaching career, which I believe was in Minnesota, he was not a good defensive. You know, he didn't have a good defensive team out there. The team was um, in the bottom third in each of those three seasons in defensive rating. So maybe that's more of a personnel thing. Maybe it's it's got to be on him, though, to get his players to put in more defensive effort those last three years. So does he still have it? You know, does he still have that coaching knack? I don't know. It's, it's hard for me to, to tell because I don't watch the Chicago Bulls. Never did. I never watched the Minnesota Timberwolves consistently. So I can't tell personally from, you know, from my point of view how Tom Thibodeau has... Um, progressed or regressed over the years of his final final years of his coaching career. But that's just, you know, I'm just saying that they're 90% likely to hire him according to this report. Um, we'll see what happens. We've got 25 games to finish out before we can even really talk about that in any kind of um, solidified aspect, I guess you could say. I don't know. But, yeah, man, it's the same old shit, man. Same old shit. R.J. Barrett continues to be excluded. They give, him, give They give him some ball time early. They exclude him the rest of the game. Bobby Portis continues to be a black hole on both ends of the floor. Mitchell Robinson, you know, he's been their most productive, most efficient player when he's on the court, but he has trouble staying in, out of foul trouble, and it continues. It continues, it continues, and it continues. And I would still like for him to start over a dinosaur like Taj Gibson. That would be fun. Hey, what do I know? But um, also Kevin Knox, we touched on him. Probably best for him if he's not going to get consistent playing time, if he's not performing well, to go to the G League and hone his craft and start to get that confidence level back up and see what he can do down there. And if you're going to throw him down there, you might as well call somebody like Iggy up here to see what he has in him, to see if he can have some NBA potential here. Um, And again, guys like Frank, guys like Trier, Dotson, they should be given 30-plus minutes consistently. Um, just to see what they have and see what their numbers look after you know, a handful of games where they get big minutes. So we touched on it all tonight. I don't think I have anything else to say. Um, I know that in the coming week or two, the Knicks expect to officially hire Leon Rose as their executive, their head executive. So that's going to be <clears throat> something to watch out for. But um, yeah, we're going to end this episode tonight about 18 plus minutes in. So thank you guys for stopping by. Once again, this has been Rob Carbone doing episode 78, Knicks Continue to Sink, of BD4, where there is no better way to get your Yankees and Knicks analysis. If you haven't followed my Facebook or Twitter, be sure to do that, at NYSportsTalkRC. If you haven't followed my Instagram, be sure to do that, at Rob J. Carbone. If you haven't subscribed to BD4, where there is no better way to get your Yankees and Knicks analysis, be sure to subscribe to that on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud, YouTube, where the video cast is, Radio Public, and plenty more platforms as well. You can find all those platforms on my blog at nysportstalkrc.wordpress.com at nysportstalkrc.wordpress.com. That is my blog. It's my opinion. Go to the page called Outlets, and you can find all of my information right there. So thank you guys so much for stopping by. I appreciate it. Um, There might be a bonus episode out tomorrow night. I apologize. I was supposed to have a bonus episode out tonight with a couple of guests, but it turns out after we recorded the entire podcast, the audio came out very muffled, and there was no way I could have put that up. But I, I am planning on having another episode Um, recording another bonus episode with a different guest tomorrow night. And if all goes well, that should be up within the next couple of days. So thank you guys so much for stopping by. This has been Rob Carbone with episode 78 of BD4, and I'll see you next time. All right, ciao. Hey, 
we hope you enjoyed the show. And if you did, be sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, share, and all that fun stuff. If you want to follow BD4 on all the different platforms we have, all you have to do is go to my website, nysportstalkrc.wordpress.com. Once again, that's nysportstalkrc.wordpress.com. Thank you guys. I'll see you next time. Ciao.